<sighs> Welcome in to the Jets group chat pod once again. I'm your host, Matt Cardos, joined tonight by, as always, Handsome Jer. Uh, back to now, apparently, left coast PJ. Um, mm. back, back on the west coast. So, joined uh, here as we record. It's Monday night, a little bit over, I guess, exactly almost one week away from the Jets season opener that uh, I think we still haven't slept much over. Of course, we'll get into that, but Jets coming off a horrible, horrible, embarrassing blowout loss on on the road in Dallas yesterday. Um, Just a lot to get into and dissect, and we sure to be doing all that tonight. But obviously, the the news we haven't really had time. I haven't had the mental capacity, honestly, to grasp my thoughts and kind of put the season in perspective to where I needed it to be to, to record an episode because it kind of all just flashed before our eyes in a span of seconds last week. And obviously oh, uh, you were dream. Aaron Rodgers obviously fucking banged for the year, torn Achilles. Um, we'll get into that now too. Apparently this timeline might be a lot more different than we initially thought, but just a lot of different avenues to go down tonight. But obviously I'm there. Monday night, MetLife, and we're we're all pumped for Rogers runs out with the flag. It's honestly the most electric I've seen that stadium since it opened, probably. At least in the I, I got season tickets in 2018, so that was Darnold's rookie year. That was the most energetic and like lively I've seen that stadium since yeah. then. And I, I cried, truthfully. Like national anthem, it all like hits you like a ton of bricks on 9-11. Rogers runs out and you're just like, man, this is, this is too good to be true. Like it, it still didn't feel real at that point, you know, like it five or six month build up to seeing that moment unfold with Rogers and it just was there. And you're like, man, long time in coming. And as soon as he goes down, you see him kind of sitting there on the ground and you're like, ah, all right, he's going to get up there. He's good. And he goes into the medical tent. You're like, ah, I turned his ankle. They're going to dude played the whole year with a broken thumb last year. Like, oh, they're going to tape up his ankle. Like he'll be back in five or six plays. And then he doesn't come out of the medical tent. And then they pull the cart up and you just knew as soon as the cart pulled up to that tent, you knew you just yeah. knew as a jet fan, it was, and how fucking poetic that Vinny Testaverde was there as the honorary captain that night. At, at the coin flip and four plays later Aaron Rodgers suffers the same fate that Testaverde suffered in 99 it was almost like a bad omen bad omen but like I still like I felt like I lost a family member <laughs> like the, the the condolence texts texts and the just the pit in your stomach that whole night going to sleep knowing that this was probably going to be what the verdict was as, as I get a pop-up notification that Nick Chubb's being carted off to the locker room. Yeah. yeah I was just about, to, I didn't want to, to like break you off, but Nick Chubb is hurt and Fitzpa- Fitzpatrick is hurt. Nice. That's uh, they not both help. just got hurt at the same play. It's not going to help uh, anybody's fantasy squads. That's for sure. But football's weird this year. Yeah. Really weird. <laughs> Fan- yeah, fantasy yeah, really weird. weird. So, so many bad football. But going back to what you're saying, Cardos, like we won. And I felt the worst that I ever felt as a Jet fan in recent memory. Yeah, like the worst. Re- like I mean, last season was brutal. I mean, was it 2015? Not making the playoffs was brutal. Like we've had, you know, hardships obviously as Jet fans. But like, like miss missing on Trevor Lawrence, like winning a game, yeah, yeah, missing on brutal. Trevor Lawrence. Like, but it was like having to go through Adam Gase. That was you just brutal. Sat, you sat there and you're just like. And again, like, you know, they're going back and forth. The defense is playing well. It's still electric, but you're just like, you have a dark cloud over you. You're like, what the fuck? And it yeah. just, it won't go away. And like you said, everybody's, you know, everybody's talking about it. You know, the work the next day, everybody's texting you condolences. And it's like, oh, sorry. Oh, Rogers. Oh, this, this. And it's like, we won. We're one and oh. And it felt yeah. like. I, I, that, at so, that point, I didn't care whether they won or lost. It didn't matter to me. Like. And that that's where I kind of like said I need to like take a, a week to like put my thoughts about the season in perspective because I still kind of feel that way like none of this matters now like it like they're built to win now but like you just know they're probably not going to win on a regular basis if they don't get good quarterback play 
And so I went into it with an open mind thinking that, oh, maybe jokes on me. Zach Wilson's figured out a thing or two. And I'm not going to be one of these guys that sits here. Uh, I mean, I couldn't go on Twitter today. That was a cesspool. But I'm not going to be one of those guys that blamed yesterday's blowout on Zach Wilson. Like Zach Wilson, did, Zach Wilson didn't play great. He threw three picks, obviously, and that's what everybody's going to see in the stat line. But like the three picks came on the last three drives when they were down 20. The kid's just throwing the ball up, trying to make something happen out of nothing. Um, but for three quarters, he played competent at at least. Um, he had no protection. He had no running game. Of course, the the problem with Zach Wilson is when you want to play Zach Wilson, you have to be able to let him throw the ball, but you need to have a running game to like exploit that. You know, like if if you know you've already have Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook shut down and they're not going to be effective, Zach Wilson can't drop back and throw 35 times a game. That's not how the Jets are going to win. They need to rush for 150 yards a game and have Zach Wilson throw maybe 18 to 20 times a game. The game plan should have been run run the ball, but it wasn't. Well, I think they had it planned on it, but I just don't think they could. I, I think the cowboy they knew the cowboys were gonna stuff the run. I mean, they but they didn't try. They just abandoned it. They yeah, they they, they, they they stuffed the they they ran the ball ten times that were non Zach Wilson rush attempts. Wilson led the, Wilson led the team in rush attempts with five thirty six yards. That's why Brees was so pissed. Yeah, and, and rightfully. Uh, yeah, how how can you blame him? I mean, the 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 guy's coming off a an injury where he missed the whole year. They have him on a pitch count. He only ran the ball eleven times in week one. I'm sure he thought his w- workload would at least be that or or higher this week. And then he comes out when he gets four touches. I don't even think he was targeted in the passing game. If he was, it was wasn't more than once or twice. I don't think Cook was targeted in the passing game at all. Like if you're going to beat a defensive front like Dallas, like you have you have to beat them with like. Short intermediate shit, screen passes. You have to jet do sweeps. what the you have to do what the Cowboys did to us. They dink and dunk right. all, all over the field and just say, "Stop us! Yeah. Run this way, run left or right. Get everybody, get crossing routes." Like, do watching something seemed? Is it just me or did something seem off yesterday? Like, did they all go out in Dallas night before and get fucking plastered and then showed up and like, oh, they had like, no they energy. Were, like, there was they no. Were, they were so flat. Defense yeah. missing tackles. They're walking around. There yeah. was a one. They caused a fumble, and Mosley and two of the guys were looking, looking down at it. Looked like they were the checking just, out a fucking library book. It was just like it was overall, and that's why I hope it was just it was a bad game, a bad day, because it's like if the defense played as well as they played against the Bills, they have a shot to win that game. Oh, for a sure. Not, 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 not even like you know it's close. I mean like. The ball could be in Wilson's hand to do something. And again, they had, they got out coached, they got outmatched, they weren't prepared. It was like a JV team was like, "Hey, listen, the entire off, the entire varsity team got suspended. Go play." They had no idea what to do. You throw a Garrett Wilson at two catches. You said McCall Hardman MIA again, all, 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 again, two two games in a row MIA. The the times that you did run. You didn't run behind your strength, which is the right side. Dwayne Brown and Lankins, um, Tomlinson got fucking abused, and they kept running. And then your best blocker from the week before, uh, Jeremy Rucker, he played four snaps. Yeah. Why would he not say, you know, hey, like, you know what? Here's a game plan. Shadow Parsons. He goes left. He goes He goes in the middle. We can figure it out. But left or right, that's where you go. You just fucking block him. That's all you do. But you start Ozama and he's yeah. running routes. Yeah, what? we got to stop with the CJ Uzoma. He can't run. He doesn't run routes really. He's and they they keep him in there to block, but he can't block. Meanwhile, like but you said, block. Jer- Jeremy Rucker was the highest graded tight end in terms of blocking. He he still is the highest graded tight end through the first two weeks in terms of blocking. And he saw five snaps yesterday. And then you see, like you said, the the left side getting abused by Micah Parsons and the rest of the front. That guy has to be on the field away. every snap. He's got to be on the field every snap to to help out that left side or or send him on the other side when when Parsons is is showing blitz. But you can't tell me that Rucker didn't deserve to play more than five plays yesterday, especially the way that they were trying to scheme things up. Um, you need they the extra scheme. blocker. You need to. You I don't need think to... they schemed. No, well they did. Like, it. That's the problem. Yeah, you're but right. That's what I'm saying, but it looked like. 
I like because they said what there's a report that came out that said the offensive line coach was in the uh, the, the facility all week more, or more than he usually is for that. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I'm not saying, oh, I could have put together a better scheme, but it's like, like the entire, it's almost like literally every team travels with their playbook or travels with their strategy and somebody lost it and we're like, oh, fuck it. Let's just figure it out. Let's just yeah. go out and see. Like, does it make me feel a little bit better that it was an NFC team? Yes. Does it make me feel a little bit better that it was arguably one of the best, if not the best team in the NFC, the best defense you're going to see? A little bit. Did it make me feel a little better that Zach Wilson wasn't the problem? A little bit, but like zero pass rush. Like, I mean, the guy's saying, you know, sauce let the world on fire, but like they let CD Lamb have what 12 catches for 146 yards. Why aren't we going back to the the, the Revis days? Find their best receiver, yeah. follow them. I know they don't like to do that, but they they call the big changes. Yeah, they, they they asked Sala that today. Why why don't they have Sauce follow the best receiver? It's because they he said they're a zone coverage team. He says that that's who they are as a team. Then they're they're not going to deviate from from who they are as they need to. He said it's not in their DNA. That that's not what they but, do. But if you're going through, if you're let's say for, let's go first half. Let's just not even say the game. Let's not say mid game adjustments. You go through the first half and you watch what they did, and all they did was ran ten to fifteen yard intermediate routes, crossing routes, dink dunk, dink dunk, dink dunk. First down, their first down, change it. Pull a linebacker off, do something. Like it, it, it's almost like it's like like they didn't know what to do. It's like they forgot how to coach, forgot how to play. The game, like yeah, the game, I mean, was one of the most pitiful games I've watched. Yeah. yeah, I mean Stephen A. Stephen A. said it. He was like, he was like, they don't have a Zach Wilson problem. They have a Nathaniel Hackett problem. Yeah, like, but, and I but, think but that. Again, I, no, no, go ahead. Nathaniel Hackett doesn't coach defense. He doesn't play defense. And, like, was the scheme shit? Yeah. I still feel like they're trying to do an Aaron Rodgers things without Aaron Rodgers. Every, yeah, everything that they had with Aaron Rodgers, they need to throw it out because he's not there anymore. Like, but they need like, to change. <clears throat> I mean, like, I'm no world beater. And I can tell you right now, if I'm going to coach offense, you prioritize production, you bring in one extra guy to, to whatever, you pound the rock, and, again, you again, don't give Zach too much. Don't make him go win the game. Go he, ground and pound. He played arguably around. well, and I'll say this. And again, I went to bat for him on Twitter the times I had to log in because I was getting real pissed off with people. You, he's he made progress. There's a couple sack would be sacks or a couple would be throws that he would have thrown last year that he did it, rolling out of the pocket, you know, making some quicker adjustments. He he looked a little bit more poised than he normally does. Right. But that being said, Aaron Rodgers would have got his ass handed to him behind that line. Yeah, it didn't matter who was quarterback yesterday for the Jets. They weren't winning exactly. that game. Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers played yesterday, they still don't win that game based on the way the defense played. Worse. Yeah, Rodgers wouldn't have had the mobility to run out those five rush attempts by um, those five rush attempts by Zach Wilson. He doesn't get out of the pocket in those instances. Serious knee injury for Nick Chubb. Yeah, they said it's He's so ruled out already. Says it's so gruesome that the TV won't even play it. That that that's not good as we're as we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, but that that that's the problem too is that they don't they don't have a Zach Wilson problem, but the entire defense is built around Aaron Rodgers and what he does the the personnel that they bought in this off season, the coordinator that they bought in this off season, like this entire fucking thing is built around Aaron Rodgers, and so they had to spend the week deviating from what they would have done if Rodgers is there, but still like the base off, like this offense is pretty much created by Aaron Rodgers. Like he helped create it with LaFleur and Hackett. This like, this is his offense. And so when he's not there, you have to obviously adapt on the fly and cater it to Zach Wilson, but it feels like they don't, they don't, trust Zach Wilson, which rightfully the so. training wheels are still on. You can see that early on. The training wheels were still on the playbook. He was run, run. It was like Herm Edwards. Run, run, pass. Run, right. run, pass. But, but the like, problem is everybody in the fucking building knew the Jets' game plan going in was ground and pound. Everybody knew the Jets, to win, had to run the ball and play defense. And those are the two things they didn't do yesterday. They couldn't then, run the ball because Dallas knew they were going to run the ball. They took away the run 
And then the Jets abandoned the run after they took it away. They didn't even try to run the ball anymore. And then but you the put Zach Wilson action. in a situation where he he's not going to be successful. Do anything else. Play action and roll Zach Wilson out. He's 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 okay in the pocket, but he's better on the move. It's the same shit they do with Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Like it was a it was a mystery that as soon as he went to another offense, Sam Darnold looked good. Like roll him out. He's an athletic quarterback. You drafted him because of his, his athleticism. Get him out of the pocket. I would play action every fucking play with a rollout. Give him more space to play with. He could see the field a little bit better. If you don't have it, then run. A two read cadence and then run. Like to me, have, in, like, to me, in the a, small samples of success that we've seen from Zach Wilson over the last now, this is the third year. Anytime he shows just short flashes of something successful. It's always in a hurry up mode. It's always in hurry up offense. That 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 last drive that they ran before halftime, that was in the two minute drill. He went right up and down the field. He made you smart don't decisions. Give him time to think. He looked poised. You don't exactly. Time to think. When he's not sitting back there, dropping back in the pocket and thinking too much, that's when shit gets away from him. But it seems like when things are more hurry up and, and he has to rush, that's honestly when he's at his best. It's and again, it's because a very small sample size. He's we don't relying on his athleticism. That's exactly what he has to do. If you as soon as like again, look at backyard football. If you're gonna go sit back and like, all right, guys, I'm gonna call this complex play. Every, no, it's just go get open. Right. Run around, go get open. As soon as you're moving, as soon as he's mobile and he gets the opportunity. Look at those big runs in the preseason as well as you know last week. Like as soon as he has an opportunity to run, he's not quick to take it, but when he takes it, he takes it in a somewhat smart fashion. And the defense pulls back a little bit because they respect his athleticism. They didn't respect anything about the Jets' offense yesterday. Not the line, not the no. running game, not his arm, nothing. They respected nothing, and they just they literally tapped fucking um, Parsons on the shoulder and said, where do you want to rush from? Go. Figure it out. There's no play. Go. He was running from the inside, the outside, the left, the right. He was on the left, and all of a sudden he shot towards the middle, and guess what? He got in every time. Yeah, got, so- got to the quarterback every time. It's almost like the line that everybody thought was going to be a problem is a problem. <laughs> and so but, how do you, how do you fix yeah. that problem now? You, you got to make some changes, man. Like to me, Dwayne Brown, it's obvious that ain't working out too well right now. Lake and Tomlinson. I think we have a Lake and Tomlinson problem. Um, that ain't going too hot either. Dwayne Brown. <laughs> yeah. Dwayne Brown, I mean, man, he, he looks shot. And so what do you do at this point? Becton looks solid. I mean, Becton's been playing fine. I mean, you might have to think about moving Becton back to the left side. Maybe slide in Vera Tucker over to the right side and fucking put Tipman in and uh, and see what you got. You might have to start. You got to try something new because this ain't going to work. Tough. It's tough to do that midseason, but they've got to make a change. Like, you, you, you made a big fuss about fucking putting Makai on the right side, and then now you're going to be like, all right, two weeks in, go to the left. I said yeah. this all along, and I know it's not going to be the sexy decision. It's not going to be this may not be the smartest, but I think it's the most optimal. Who's your best offensive lineman? Elijah Vera Tucker. Why is he not playing left tackle? He played left tackle at USC. He crushed it at right tackle. It's going to make him more money in the free in free agency, and it's your your most crucial position. You take the best offensive lineman, put him in, put him there. Like I mean, we got abused on the left side. Yeah. They're going to continue to get abused. That's the thing, too. I don't know what the fuck Jet fans are smoking. A lot of them are going into this weekend high and mighty. The Jets are going to fucking lose this game if they don't play any differently than they played in Dallas. Like, New New England just always comes into MetLife and takes the Jets to fucking well. task. Yeah. yeah. And the, their defense is fucking good. If you don't remember from a year ago, the, the New England defense is good. And you thought you had a Micah Parsons problem. Well, you got a Matt Judon a problem Matt Judon again problem. this week. Right. You don't think Matt Judon's fucking licking yeah. his chops? And You're going to have the same problem this week. It's going to be I, – I mean, I know their offense might not be as sexy, but if you if you told me I'm going to wake up on Monday morning and the Patriots beat the Jets like 24 to 6, I wouldn't be My surprised. Problem. Yeah, no. We haven't beaten yeah. them in MetLife since when? What was it, like four years, right? No, 20, they've lost – I think 18 in a row to New England. Yeah, like yeah, 24 to 6 sounds right. I don't, they might not score a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, that defense is nasty, man. Christian Gonzalez, the rookie that they drafted, he's he's the truth, man. Then you got check held, held Tyreek Hill to like they didn't let he didn't let him go off the top. Like he's going to scheme shit. 
where Zach Wilson's going to throw another three picks. Does nobody remember the last time Zach Wilson faced Bill Belichick's defense? It was, it was like that. It was that. It was that game last fall. The the not the punt return ended the game. It was like nothing, nothing or three, three, whatever the score was. The it literally was a a return for a touchdown as time expired. They couldn't mm-hmm. they couldn't score a touchdown the entire day. Um, I I. It's it's I, I, it's I'm back to, to it's, it's the same exact team as last, last year. It's last the year. same team as last year. I'm trying to hold. It's been two weeks. I'm trying to hold on to faith that it was just a a bad day. Like it might have just been a, literally a bad day because no, like the defense can't look that good on Monday and then that bad on Sunday. Either they were they drank the Kool Aid, whatever it was. Maybe it was a wake up call. They got recalibrated, whatever. It's more of a litmus test that we find out on on Monday of next week. Like you said, remember the Bills are still one and one. The Chiefs are still one and one. Your fucking the beloved Chargers are zero and two. The beloved Bengals are zero and. It's not the panic button yet. Everyone's still shaking off the rust. You see what's happening in fucking both Monday night games. It's 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 rough out there. But oh, for sure, you have got to yeah. like settle down, get back. To fucking neutral and move forward. The season's yeah. not lost. Don't throw it off onto 2024, but all that shit, whatever. But my only fear is ends and then deleting his Twitter and then fucking Brees Hall tweeting out four footballs as four carries, like Garrett Wilson frustrating you seeing. Like nobody would request a trade in the next fucking five weeks. Now, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, I I agree so, with you. Oh, I th- I think I think I just froze for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Run the fucking ball. And, yeah, run the you fucking ball. Like it. Zach Wilson's run the there. Ball. Stop making it like where oh this is Zach Wilson's team now. Look like no. How about you just help make it's it like Hall's team. where your yeah. grandpa Brees Hall's team. Make it like that. It's Brees Hall's team. Run the ball. Run the ball with him, you know. Put Izzy Abanacan in there. Put Michael Carter in there. Put that. Put, run the ball with all these guys, and that's that's what you should do. Like if it, and I and I and I've said this before. Like I I I don't think Zach Wilson's good. I don't think he's the answer. I don't think he'll ever be good. But if I do, if I could defend him on any way possible, there's there's so much bad quarterback play all across the board right now. Like Joe Burrow's playing like ass. Trevor Lawrence didn't play like well right now. Derek Carr sucks. Bryce Young is fumbling everywhere. Kenny Pickett's not looking good. Desha- Deshaun Watson doesn't look good. But all these quarterbacks don't don't look good. So the AFC still is wide open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's and that's where I well, think Josh they Allen's should. a turnover turnover machine. Like, like the only like. You're like... Right. Yeah, I think that's where you have to take solace in the fact you don't that you need to hit the panic button yet. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I agree. It it's not it's not to the point yet where the season's done. You can't you can't go into week three and say we're we're finished. That's it. Packing it in. But the the thing is, what you you hang your hat on is the way that the Jets play defense, and that's what kept them around last year. And that's how they were as competitive as they were last year was the defense and the way that they buzzed every week. And mm-hmm. I thought that I thought that's what would keep them in the game yesterday against Dallas was the defense. And obviously, like you said, Spiga, I, I think you just have to kind of talk it, chalk it up to a, a bad day because I don't know. I think you have a big enough sample size on the defense now to know that that's not who they were. Um, that's probably their worst mm-hmm. performance, probably in the Robert Sala era. And uh, that that's not going to be an every week thing, you know, like, yeah, you have to hope that they go back to the drawing board and and they're they're ready to play for what I think is an offense that isn't that dynamic. They don't have a ton of playmakers on there, but but you don't need to be like you don't need to be the Chiefs. You don't need to be the Bill. Like by the way, everyone, both of you look at the group chat. I found a video of Nick Chubb. He already they said tore his left knee, MCL, PCL, and LCR, cartilage damage, and dislocated it. Fuck. Oh. Look at the, look at your phone, PJ. But Damn it. 
that's the thing. Like, you don't need to set the world on fire on offense. Like, play competent ball on offense. Have, like, a nice, whatever, uh, package of plays where Zach Wilson's throwing the ball 15 to 20 times and you're pounding the ball with four running backs. And, like I said, lean their defense. It was a bad day. Let's hope it's a bad day. Leave it at that. But come out fucking Sunday, back home, rare to go, and beat the shit out of the Patriots, who are 0-2. But make it happen. I feel like they should hire Rex Ryan. Like, I feel like he's the only one who's, like, smart enough to be like, no, this is how what we're going to do because this is what we have, and this is how we're going to win football games. <clears throat> yeah, I I agree. They, they need – they need I don't know what they need, man. <laughs> they they need a lot. They need a lot right now. It's 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 just insane to think about seven days ago, almost to the minute, that we were going into the season with like Super Bowl expectations. Like this is this is gonna be the best season of our lifetimes. This is historic shit. This is the start of something great. And here we are recording the next episode from there and we're like, oh man, how are we gonna beat New England? Like, what do we gotta do well, to what do we gotta do to get past the Patriots in week three? The um, roller coaster of emotions that this team has given us for the past like six months. Like honestly. Oh, oh I just saw the Nick Chubb one. You're welcome. But like, oh. that Monday that Monday was by itself. Was like you said, Carlos, you ran out, you're crying, it's the national anthem, you feel great, four plays in, then you get sad, then they blow up because they win, and you give me the, um, gives me the, the punt return, and then it's like then back down on to, like on the next week. Like, oh, I, Nick, I, Nick Chubb may, may never play again. Oh, my God. Oh, God. You're welcome. Oh, no, it. <laughs> It says that Nick Chubb dislocated his left knee and tore his MCL, PCL, and LCL with cartilage damage on October 10th, 2015. Oh, someone tweeted that that's what it was right he, now. He injured that same knee tonight, but uh, they, they, they don't know that if that's what happened yet. He, but no, I have the video. I just saw it. I just saw the video. No good. Yeah. Oh, you Oh, you sent the video. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. Spiga sent it. Yeah, I'm sorry I watched. Um... Oh my God! It's just this, it's the life of a Jeff man is rough roller coaster. Yeah, I do. Really I just is. and th- and that's my struggle as like a fan is like we're. I mean, we do a podcast about this team. Like, we don't make money off this. Like, we just do it because we we like this team. We we love them, and as fans, we like the th- the five of us like to come together and like bullshit and talk about them, but. Like my my patience is getting to the point where like, what I I kind of I'm back at the point I'm like what what's the point of this season like? Well, that is the million dollar question now. Sheesh. Like I I think every week this is like what we're gonna be talking about is like the quarterback plays subpar, the line is bad. And that's not like something you could fix week three or like mid season or like no. a trade deadline. Like you're not getting, I don't know, you're you're not getting a, a tackle at the trade deadline. Yeah, that's you're not gonna, getting Larry Tunsil at the, the trade deadline. Like right. you're not going to get a world beater. Yeah, it's like, it's everybody, be sh- everybody, shut up. You're not getting Kirk Cousins at the deadline. Like that's not happening. Fuck you, want him? But I'm I'm also a little surprised that like. They haven't been more aggressive in trying to bring in some kind of veteran quarterback. They're like all on this Zach Hill. They're they're ready to die on the Zach Wilson Hill, and I don't yeah, all, I don't understand why because they were they blew the Zach Wilson Hill up a year ago. Like they did, yeah. They benched him. Like do it and again. That, and that's where I find it hard to like take anything more than face value of like. We believe in Zach. This is Zach's team. Like you pulled that motherfucker for a journeyman last year, really? when he, wh- and that and that's the thing, for me mentality wise, that's different than a year ago. Is a year ago when we were watching this, we thought Zach Wilson was the guy still, and so we were giving him the opportunity, and we were rolling Figure with that Figure week in yeah. and week out. The Jets already pulled the plug on Zach Wilson, so this is no more 
longer about developing Zach Wilson. Yeah, Zach, like, I don't give a shit about Zach Wilson now. It's about winning football games. And Zach Wilson doesn't give you the best chance to do that. He might at this very minute, but you can't tell me going out and finding a veteran quarterback isn't going to be something that this team should at least pursue to where in two or three weeks, if Zach Wilson's not pulling his weight, you can't tell me you're going to pull pull him and go to Tim Boyle. But there, there's got to be somebody out there that gives you a better chance to win than, than Zach Wilson is going to. Whether it's- Yeah, his name is Mike F. and White. Yeah. <laughs> like Carter, you said it right. At the present moment, there's nobody else. Like there, like I mean, you need to bring somebody in. Do you need another another veteran body? Another somebody to learn the play because God forbid Zach goes down. Now what? You right. need somebody else. However, people who are going, give me Carson Wentz, give me Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear that. Right now. Oh, I'd take Gardner Minshew in no, a second. No, no, no. no. Oh, yeah. I would take Min- him over Zach Wilson. I'll oh, take Min- Min- Minshew mania, and I don't even think twice about it. Oh. Yeah, I would. I would do. I would. Do he Gardner couldn't even start in Indianapolis. Come on, guys. I mean, he yeah. threw. He threw for like two hundred something yards yesterday when Richardson went out with a concussion. Because they schemed against a running quarterback, and then all of a sudden you keep a stationary quarterback, and then what? It's the same thing when, like, when Mike White came in. You didn't you you scheme against one guy. You don't have tape on anybody, and then this guy comes in and lights you up. And the next week, he gets his doors blown. Either it's way, fair. either way, Zach Wilson. I mean, it's, the writing is on the wall. I feel most Jet fans, me included, don't want to read the writing on the wall. He's probably not the future of the quarterback. Yeah, the quarterback and I, we've sense, we've all accepted fine. it. And I'm the... pretty pretty sure uh, round one of next year. Your draft, and if not a lineman or his replacement, depending on how the board falls. I mean, the Jets are so sure that Zach Wilson wasn't the guy they were traded. A, they were willing to trade a first round pick to get his replacement. <laughs> so sure. they burned a first round pick on him and they were willing to burn another one to replace him. So obviously, they're going to keep that first round pick now. And you're probably going to have to spend that on a lineman to protect a 41 year old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles. Oh. But I don't know, man. For me, it's just like a whole. I'm just like mentally fucked as a fan <laughs> with with the whole Aaron Rodgers thing because I don't know how to feel week to week. Like I'm, I'm obviously I'm I'm here. I'm recording. I'm talking about it, and I'm yeah. And we actually we haven't even talked about that. Like, like can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, man. Like yeah. that that was his fault. That's a three step drop back. Yeah, and I, I was watching. I was like, throw the ball, and he yeah. didn't throw the ball. Yeah, you know he held on to the ball, and another thing is, is that like you're 39 years old. I mean, if that's Tom Brady, he's throwing the ball to the ground. Yeah. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers is trying to spin around like like he's fucking 29 years old. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I I think everybody's in agreement that 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 wasn't like a, a lot of people. I kept seeing it on Twitter. A lot of people had like the freeze frame of Dwayne Brown laying on the ground with Rodgers going down, and I'm like, but. It was no, a cup. It was a, it was a cup block that was like the play design and get you know, move the camera up a little bit and show the free stream of Garrett Wilson streaking across the middle wide open. Wide open. I mean, he hits Garrett Wilson. That that play's probably going for thirty or forty yards easy. Hey, yeah, I don't know why he didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I mean, gu- gun shy, now, and it's it's going to cost here. him and it's going to cost us. And the 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 two just invested so much in each other. The Jets invested so much in Rodgers and Rodgers invested a lot in the Jets. He put in a lot of time. He put in a lot of work installing the offense and we were kind of robbed of it in four plays and it just doesn't feel but, as from a but, fan perspective, it just doesn't feel fair no. for all that we've gone through. But the way the team rallied and they were able to win Monday night, like we put Zach Wilson in an impossible position on mo- that Monday night and he's came out and won. Somehow, some way, deep in like whatever, they found a way to win. But it's like this Sunday, yesterday, they played the way you figured they would have played, just seeing what you just said, investing so much in Rodgers and it going down the tubes. But they yeah. didn't. But it's like, but then they did it this week. It's it, you. No one can tell me that something somewhere didn't happen. That like that whole team fucking was off, and just had no get up. Zero pressure. They had one sack, and it was a Solomon Thomas. I mean, Q won his assignments, but wasn't in the backfield at all. Tony Pollard ran all over him. Like it, it's something. It was off. 
doesn't it didn't look right. Yeah. It looks like a bad fucking dream. But it's we're right back to where we were last year. Frustrated players, subpar quarterback play. The defense plays well one week and the offense sucks or with the Jets ever. There's always one side of the ball that drops the ball and we look like complete utter shit and lose. You know, and another th- you know another thing that frustrated me yesterday is that I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, Will Will McDonald. I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, Will McDonald inactive, and we're like, here we are. We need all this help across the board, and we had not one rookie that they drafted in this past draft play a snap yesterday. Not one. No, Will McDonald. Izzy was inactive. McDonald was inactive. Tipman didn't play a snap. All those other depth guys. Uh, Carter Warren didn't is obviously on on IR. I mean, and that's not- a coaching problem, and that's what's concerned and concerned me yesterday too. Like you played to have a beefier Carl Lawson. I understand that. I, I didn't even know Carl play. Lawson played yesterday. And once at that point, not once sit Carl sit Carl Lawson play Huff every fucking down and rotated McDonald and and JJ. That's it. And then at this point, play fucking Tipman at left. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. At this they, point, they, I would fire Salah and I would hire Rex Ryan because he's the only one that's proved it. <laughs> uh, I'm not I, ready to fucking to, to discount fucking Salah yet, but coaching mistakes like they did yesterday and being out coached the better they did yesterday, that was on them. I think the only way they're firing Robert Salah is if Aaron Rodgers tells them to fire Robert Salah. Yeah. That's because Robert Salah, if you if you listen to Aaron Rodgers talk. He's a big Rob Sala guy. Like that's, he says it's not entirely, but like that went into his reasoning for coming there. He has familiarity with him. He knows him through the floor and uh, has always kind of admired him. So yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know that you're firing the coach without Aaron Rodgers say so. I mean, maybe behind the scenes Rodgers fucking hates him and <laughs> he goes to <laughs> he goes to Woody and he's like, "Yo, I'm I'm back. My Achilles is good," but like. You got to bring in this guy next year. Like this is, or he fires him and is like, you got to make Hackett the head coach. Um, no hell no, <laughs> hell no. Um, but this is this is. I mean, it's not going to be for a long period of time. It, but like this is Aaron Rodgers' franchise right now. Like he took a pay cut. He he took that salary dump or he dumped all mm-hmm. that salary. He's going to make the decisions. If there's a free agent brought in, he's going to tell them who to bring in. If there's a personnel Honestly, move, they're going to get him. He, he's tell he's telling them what moves to make. I mean, it's Joe Douglas's team. He's going to put his stamp on it, I guess. But you you know for damn sure that Aaron Rodgers is in his ear telling him who he wants or who he'd work well with or who's going to fit what he wants to do. Um, that's the reason why he gave back so much money because he wanted to have the flexibility <laughs> to be able to do that. When the opportunity presented itself, yeah, we heard nothing what you said. You froze a lot, but I'm just going to smile and nod like I knew you were talking about. I got gotcha. you. Well, we're, we're almost through it, boys. Nice. Um, but yeah, Listen, I don't. I don't know what up, we got next week. We got Sunday. Yeah, I don't. Let's I don't. Feel, up, I don't, up, don't, feel I don't feel good about Sunday. I know a lot of Jet fans do. I. I, I don't feel great about Sunday. Why do they do? They, the Patriots always like kill us. Why do they feel good? It doesn't make sense. I don't know, man. A lot of they think that they're zero and two, and uh, they haven't played particularly they, they, well. They, they almost they almost won that game against the Dolphins, and they only won they almost won the game against the Eagles. Yeah, I know. You don't have to tell me, man. I know they're going to they're 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 be one and two. Like they're getting their first. I'm, and I'm, I'm not mentally prepared for this. I got Little G coming to the game with me too. Oh man. Oh really? Yeah. You're gonna come and by then the... after after the Patriots. Who is it? It's the Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs yeah. Sunday night. So then that's a loss. Yeah. Then Denver. And then Denver. In Denver. And then they, loss. Scored, they, is, they so. scored thirty five points yesterday. Yeah, at, yeah. At least they could score thirty five. Yeah. So that, that, they, that could be a loss. Then they played the Eagles. That's a loss. Yeah. The Giants. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's it's it could be a stretch. Yeah, it could snowball from you quickly, or, I mean, or you just see the defense that you're used to seeing show up Sunday, and 
the offense gets back to what we know they can be when they run the ball and run the ball. Maybe we're talking next Monday, the Jets fucking beat the shit out of the Patriots. The monkeys off their back from losing 18 in a row. And we're two and oh in the division and all is right in the world again. But it's it's just like recency bias. Like we feel like shit because they played like shit yesterday, but all it takes is a win on Sunday and we're going to record next Monday. We're going to be talking playoffs again. So it's, it's just funny. It's it's how fandom works, and that's the beauty of it. That's why we're that's why we're all friends. That's why we all talk about this shit because things change so often from day to day that your your feelings, your emotions, just everything changes from the day to day, pass to pass, drive to drive. Every your emotions yep. go with it, and so, um, yeah, I I don't feel great about it, but I'm not going to say that they can't beat them and, um, kind of put the monkey off their back. I think it's 18 in a row that they've lost New England. Um, I'd love to see that end. I mean, that would go a long way in kind of moving on from the past. And if you want to keep moving forward this seat, like I'll put it this way, like PJ just pointed out who they have coming up on the schedule. If they want to make a season of what they have left, they have to win this game. Like where else is it coming? Like if it's not this one, where else is it coming? I yeah. mean, New, New England's good. They have a good defense, but like there's good qualities in every team that they're going to face the rest of the way. This is probably the most mediocre of the, I mean, Denver, but I mean, of the next four or five teams they have coming up, New England's the probably most winnable game and they match up probably a little bit better with them than, than anybody else. So all the way until they play the Texans in December. Yeah. Yeah. It's not they, the chargers. It ain't the Raiders. It ain't the dolphins. Falcons are two and L dolphins again. I mean, maybe Browns is not Chubb, who the fuck knows, but still. Yeah. Everyone's like said, everyone's got qualities and everyone can beat you. Show up. That's it. Just show up. Yeah, I I agree, my friend. Uh I guess we'll do uh before we wrap uh predictions. Uh, I guess let's put it on the record. What what do you what do you think, PJ? Well I think you're feeling like me, not too good. I like I like your prediction earlier, twenty four six Patriots. Yeah, I could see that definitely. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee my guarantee fucking lock of the century is that no matter what it is, fucking Jets Twitter is <laughs> in a in array on fucking Monday morning. Um, I'm gonna be optimistic. I got faith. They'll figure it out. It's gonna be another low scoring shit box, but seventeen ten Jets. Seventeen ten Jets. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I. PJ took my my original pick, but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm feeling something like that. I don't know. I'll go I'll go twenty one ten. The they get a touchdown. Maybe they get a defensive touchdown. It seems like they always kind of get a defensive score, or they play well on defense. The last couple times out against Mac Jones, I wasn't it last year. They had didn't they have a pick six? That was, no no that was the um, or a strip sack for a touchdown. It was when John Franklin Myers. Hit Mac Jones. He threw a pick six to Michael Carter. Oh, that's what they, it was. And they called it back, and that they was like the turning point back. of the whole game of the whole yeah. season. Right, yeah. right. JFM had another um, rough and a passer call. To the, the officials suck. That, that was so a, bad. I get, I get. He hit, he hit him low, but like he kind of got tripped and pushed it's into all him. He could like, do, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, otherwise, he. I mean, he would have just fell into him anyway. I mean, he he, he at least wrapped him. Like it wasn't. Wasn't malicious. I get they're gonna call anything below the belt, but that wasn't like a roughing call. That I'm, I I would have eaten the flag on that one. But my, my bet is that uh, the Jets do not get a roughing the passer called in their favor next week. Yeah, uh, that fucking happen. You probably won't make any money on. <laughs> you probably won't make any money on that bet because you take that to the <laughs> bank. Because it doesn't uh, fucking happen. Yeah, that's uh, it's like. It's like saying Patrick Mahomes will throw for one passing yard. It's like a lock. Like, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. Those They're the... shitty DraftKings props that they did. Yeah, exactly. There will not be a rough in the passer call on the Jets today. Oh, boys, life of a Jets fan. We'll see you out there, J21, though, baby. Are you going to come to the tailgate? Yeah, maybe. All right, cool. I'm sure you, I know you usually hop around the Charlie and all those guys, though. No, but I'll get the, I'll get the little man with who, me. So I'm not who gonna who else is going? I have no idea. I'm saying um, just any uh, anybody else from your family? No, no, from our family, no. But I think like uh, your brother. No, no, my brother's got <laughs> Mike. His son Mikey's got like 
football one in the morning and then hockey in the afternoon. Like these, oh, they, they too much. yeah, too much. But they're going to Ramsey football. Shout out Ramsey football is uh, going to be running on the field. Oh, sick for the Chiefs game. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, so that's we'll, gonna be fun. Yeah, we'll look out for those boys for sure. Yeah. Oh, congratulations! Speak a big fucking winner of the Sauce Gardener bobblehead giveaway today. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Who'd you gotta, who'd, yeah. who'd you shout out? Who do we got to shout out for that? Well, I gotta wait till I get it first because then I'll know, I'll know everything who it's coming from. But uh, F O, hold on, let me get that. Shoot. Oh, it was folk. It was one of the Foco. The fo- yeah, this is the first one I've ever won in my entire life. I have never ever ever won. See, all the the shit that I've posted about the DMs to get replied to. Yeah, I don't even know where it is. Here it is. Uh, from the Jetcast podcast. Oh, nice! Shout, shout, out. Up. So, shout, so shout out to those yeah. guys. Shout out to them. Limited edition Jets sauce Gardner bobblehead. Just don't fucking ask for a trade. Yeah, you're doing the whole thing for me. But yeah, it's pretty dope. Him. He brought his his Twitter's back. He reactivated the Twitter. It's He's back. Good. He feels better. But yeah, the Foco shout out Foco USA and the Jetcast podcast. Um, when I get the sauce bobblehead, I'll bring it on. But uh, yes, yeah, the first Twitter thing I ever won ever. Big ups to that. Congrats. Yeah, you, you, you deserve it, buddy. Yeah, right, All right. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you on Sunday. We'll we'll uh, toast a few brews in our Jets group chat podcast koozies in the lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, at Hope least win. can't can't lose in the parking lot. So. <laughs> All right, fellas. I appreciate you hopping on. You guys, thank you for listening. Uh, as always, YouTube spotify apple pods uh twitter instagram find us on there like share tell all your friends appreciate you all for tuning in and and obviously our our following continues to grow and i think we're up to almost a thousand on both twitter and instagram now so we're definitely got the word spreading and we're we're keep trying to try new things and different things and and stuff like that as we continue to grow so appreciate y'all thanks for the love Until then, uh, go Jets Sunday. Let's jet up, baby. Flight, baby.